So, will this book about a transgender teddy bear be in your kid's stocking this Christmas? No, didn't think so. But a primary school teacher in Hertfordshire has been lambasted after using the controversial picture book to teach kids as young as 10 about gender ideology. That's right, the book, Introducing Tilly, is sparking fury among campaigners who fear that the story is being used to indoctrinate young people by making them think about whether they are actually born into the wrong body and then glorifying it with a story of unbridled happiness. Just take a little look at this and a listen. I'll always be your friend, Thomas. Thomas the Teddy took a deep breath. I need to be myself, Errol. In my heart, I've always known that I'm a girl, Teddy, not a boy, Teddy. I wish my name was Tilly, not Thomas. Good for you, Tilly. Wear whatever makes you happy, said Ava. I'll think I'll get rid of my bow. I like my hair free. Yeah, it goes on like this. They played together all morning. See you at our tea party next. Yes, yeah, see you there. I'm bringing a friend, etc., etc., etc. Anyway, basically, what this book shows is, well, essentially a very glorified version of what it might be like for a child to just change gender like that. The charity No Outsiders have arranged for schools to read this to youngsters with campaigners concerned about children's welfare by being exposed to what is, let's be honest, an incredibly complicated issue. Teacher Andrew Moffat said, as a teacher, we've got to find ways to prepare children for life in modern Britain, where they are going to meet people who are Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, or have no faith, or have different families, sexualities. Fine. But what do you think? Should we be teaching primary school children what we can, well, that we can be, any gender that we want to be. Or, or is this indoctrination? Let me know your thoughts now. Email me, gbviews at gbnews.com. They have been flying in so far. I'll go to those with some corkers in there. You can, of course, tweet us as well, at gbnews. And while you're there, go and take part in our poll. I'll bring you the results shortly. But to debate this now, I'm joined by Lucy Marsh from the Family Education Trust and human rights campaigner Peter Tatchell. Thank you very, very much for joining me. Uh, Lucy, I'll start with you. Um, do you think that, you know, teddy bears like this are, are, are indoctrinating children? Well, not teddy bears in particular. This, is, this book certainly is. Um, it's just being used as, as a vehicle to in, indoctrinate children about the, the false concept that you can be born in the wrong body. And um, this has no place in schools. Um, primary schools should not be used as um, vehicles to indoctrinate young children. That It's not appropriate. It's, it's a contested ideology that has no basis in scientific fact, and it shouldn't be in schools. Peter, Teddy has a new name. Let me introduce you to Tilly. What a great name. Let's go and play Tilly. So Teddy is, it's not a complicated concept to grasp this book, by the way. Um, it is yeah, a very, very unhappy teddy bear. Something's really bugging him. It's all miserable and dark in Teddy land. And then Teddy decides to tell his friend that actually Teddy is now Tilly, moves his bow tie up to the top of his head, presumably to symbolise that he's now a girl, changes his name to Tilly, and life becomes absolutely flipping brilliant. That's not really true, is it, Peter? But I can assure you this book is not about indoctrinating or propagandising children at all. It's about encouraging understanding, tolerance, acceptance and respect. It's designed to tackle the bullying of trans kids in our schools, which no parent I think would approve of. We don't want any child, trans or otherwise, to be bullied or teased or to feel unsafe or unincluded. So this book is just simply, it's about love, kindness, and friendship. It's about accepting people who are different from yourself. And the basic principle applies across the board, you know, accept people of different faiths or races, accept okay. people of different cultural backgrounds. It's a, it's a story of tolerance, not of not a, not a Go on, Lucy, come back to that then. Do you agree with that? No, I don't agree with that. Why do anti-bullying policies have to focus on one particular group? If you're teaching children not to bully people, you should be teaching them not to bully anyone. They don't have to focus on, on, one, particular, on one particular group. And, and actually comparing transgender ideology to, to different faiths is also, well, I suppose, I suppose in a way it, it could be seen as a religion because there's no, there is no basis to say that there's such a thing as a trans, as a trans child. It's, it's actually harmful to say that children are transgender 
and we certainly don't believe that 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 this 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 is this is something that exists. Okay, now Peter, it's not really just this book, though, is it? I know that's what we're centering our discussion on today, but it's not really just this book because parents are also very concerned about very young children being taught about quite graphic sexual things like anal sex and orgasms. And do kids really need to be taught about that in school? I don't think you'll find that any young children are being taught about those issues. But I think what may happen is that older children, 16 and plus, may have those issues raised. It, can I just ask, can I just ask that on that, do, do, you, do you seriously think that, do you seriously think that when parents are quoted in the media as saying, this is what my child is being taught at school and they're horrified about that, do you think they're lying? Well, there may be one or two examples, but it's not representative of what's happening in the vast majority of schools. And certainly all the teachers I know say very clearly that for young children, um, particularly primary school children, there is nothing being taught about sex. It's all about love, different families and relationships. Okay. Oh, it's about oh. letting young kids know that, you know, some people will have two parents, a mum and a dad. Some will live in an extended family with perhaps grandparents or cousins or aunts, and some will live in same-sex families. That's not about sex. It's just about the reality of all modern right. British family life. Lucy, in your work at the Family Education Trust, do, do you have you come across anything that, that refutes what Peter says there? With there's so much evidence, there's there's reams of evidence that there's inappropriate relationship and sex education in schools, all levels, primary schools and secondary schools. So much of this is taught to children under the age of of legal consent. It is inappropriate. Teachers are not therapists, they're not doctors. The teachers should not be teaching children about about explicit sex acts and about sexual pleasure. It, it is inappropriate in schools and it shouldn't be shouldn't be happening. Parents don't want it. The majority of parents don't want it. And parents are the primary educators of their children. It's not up to teachers and it shouldn't be up to the state to decide um, who teaches children about, about explicit se sex acts. It's just not unnecessary in schools and it's harmful. Peter, some people are very concerned. Peter, some people are very concerned, Peter, that what this means is that it opens up a door where people think that children from a very young age are able to consent about their sexual identity and their gender, and then off the back of that may indeed then be able to consent to other sexual things that as children they should not be able to do. The, 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 the theory there would be that this is a, could be a, a vehicle for paedophilia, your views. Well, it certainly should not be such a vehicle and paedophilia is abhorrent, but I can assure you that the purpose of relationship and sex education in schools is to protect young people against abusive relationships, against dangerous diseases like HIV, and against um, just bad relationships where one person bullies and controls the other. It's all about promoting the health and welfare of young people. Mm. And we know from the surveys that most parents say they want their children to be educated about relationships and sex in schools, that they themselves don't feel able and capable of doing it. Okay. And they're very grateful that teachers do it. And the end result is that where schools do this, they have lower rates of teenage pregnancies and abortions lower rates of HIV and lower rates of sex abuse. All right. So good quality sex education works. It protects young people, which is uh, what Lucy, we all want. Do you think that if parents see literature like this book, introducing Teddy, a story about being yourself, being taught to their kids, that they will be within their rights to pull their children out of school? I think that what we actually need, we need the government to restore the right for parents to withdraw their children from relationship and sex education. At the moment, they can withdraw their child from sex education, but the problem is, is that they can't withdraw them from relationship education, which is where a lot of this indoctrination and sexualized children, sexualizing children is actually coming in. Um, and we, we need to have that option back so that parents can withdraw their, their, their child from, from that because p parents parents don't want it. They don't want their young children being taught that they could be born in the wrong body and they don't want their child being taught dangerous and harmful sex acts so that children are just too young to actually understand the risks that are involved.
OK, look, both of you, thank you very, very much. A good clash to get us going there. That was the wonderful Lucy Marsh from the Family Education Trust and, of course, human rights campaigner Peter Tatchell. Both of you, thank you very, very much. I'm just going to go to the inbox very quickly on this. Kathleen says, yep, yeah, Patrick, they are indoctrinating young, impressionable minds. It's disgusting. GBviews at gbnews.com. Thank you very much. Everybody who's getting in touch, the inbox is on fire over this. Always gets you going, this stuff. So who do you agree with, though? as it's revealed that transgender teddy bears... There we are. I don't know. I don't really know what a specific transgender teddy bear looks like, but apparently that's it, so sorry if you're not, but there we go. Um, ..are being used to teach gender ideology in primary schools. And campaigners, are they right that children are actually being indoctrinated? People have been getting onto us on Twitter as well, like Dee, who says, ..anyone caught doing this should be sacked immediately. Kids don't need to know this stuff, leave them alone. Yeah, but then you see... I worry that they think they're doing the right thing, don't they? They think they're doing the right thing, teachers. Carry on Twitter says, this indoctrination of our kids has happened under a Tory government. Gender is a belief and sex is a protected characteristic. But no school is teaching this truth. That's, of course, the views of our view carry there. You are right, though. It has happened under a Tory government. And, you know, all too often, I think it's all very well and good for the Tories to say, oh, look, this will get much worse under Labour. Uh, it poss quite possibly would, wouldn't it? But it has been allowed to happen. The, the creep, creep, creep has been allowed to happen. Alex on Twitter says, kids need to be taught about gender somehow and doing it in a way that they can relate to is just good teaching. It's that age-old question, though, Alex, isn't it, of the chicken and the egg. So I cast my mind back to when I was at school and I wonder, really, how many children that I was at school with were trapped in the closet or felt l wrestling on daily with that struggle of feeling like they were genuinely born into the wrong body. And I just don't think it was anywhere near as many as are now coming out and now getting involved in those communities. And I just wonder what's really causing that. But your verdict is in 89% of you agree that children are being indoctrinated. 11% say, of course, they're not.